Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Carpo here, back again with another Fallout 76 video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the update 1.15 patch notes. But as always, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video, smash that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, and stay up to date for more Fallout 76 videos. Now let's get started. Now we have the new update today, and it's roughly around 8 gigabytes for console, and around 3.5 gigabytes for the PC. For our patch highlights we have ever up rewards so we're basically going to be joining the pioneer scouts to complete new quests challenges and events and you also receive your first backpack for backpacks equip a backpack to increase your carry weight then apply mods to customize it appearance and all utility options under personal vending machine sell your wares to your fellow dwellers by building up a vending machine advertise your location on the map by powering it up legendary exchange machine Machines had the train station to turn in your unwanted legendary items into a legendary script, which can be traded to the purveyor, a new vendor that will arrive in the Appalachian Mountains on May the 16th. And last but not least, camp and workshop changes. We've implemented new workshop PvP rules, player damage protections for camps in adventure mode, and loosen restrictions on building camp foundations. Now, this is going to be a lengthy one, so kick back and relax. As always, I've been leaving a link down below so you can check all of this out yourself. Now let's get started. Join the Pioneer Scouts. That's right, read Pioneer Scouts posters at train stations around Appalachia to begin your journey as the newest member of the Order of the Tadpole. You can also unlock a Pioneer Scout poster for your camp for free in the Atomic Shot through June the 9th. As a Tadpole, you can start part in a variety of new activities and mini quests to show off your pioneer spirit. Complete new pioneer scout challenges to earn badges that will help you rank up and can be turned into claim themed loot. Join the new Terrors of the Dark event to listen to spooky stories around the campfire with your fellow pioneer scouts. Read our Future article at follow.com to learn more about the Pioneer Scouts. Now for backpacks. Backpacks are a new functional item that you can equip to increase your carry weight. You can receive your furry backpack by being promoted to the Pioneer Scouts ranks of Possum. You know, craft higher level backpacks to receive a larger carry weight bonuses. Backset backpacks can be modded to change their appearance to match your personal taste. You can also add functionality mods to give your backpack more utility, like increased damage reduction or food refrigeration, often in exchange for reduced storage capacity. Now these backpacks will remain visible over outfits and armor, but will be unequipped when you step into a set of power armor. Now out outfits that are already have a cosmetic backpack built in will not display your functionality backpack. However, you will still receive the benefits that your backpack provides. Note, our previous article on backpack stated that you would remain functional while wearing a power armor. This was incorrect and we do apologize for the miscommunication. Now for personal vending machines. I know y'all waiting for this. This is pretty cool. Start a new business venture by building a vending machine in your camp, which you can use to sell items to other dwellers for caps. You can build up to four vending machines in your camp using the vendors tab in the building menu. Power it to advertise your camp to other players on the map. Players can also fast travel to camps that offer vendings and appear on the map. Pretty cool. Up to 30 individual or stacks of items can be assigned to the vending machine at any given time. Assign items from your inventory or statue your vending machine and set the cash prices that you like to sell for them. Pretty awesome. Items you've assigned to vending machines will not be removed from your stash. Instead, they will display an icon next to their name so it's easy to tell what you've placed on sale at a glance. You'll receive a notification whenever a player buys one of your items. 90% of the sale will go add it to your cap balance. The next 10% that you're missing, this is a fee. It has been designed to help maintain the health of the game's economy and mitigate inflation. Okay. Items can still be sold after you reach the current maximum cap balance of 25,000, but you will not receive any caps beyond that limit. Alternatively, you can use the map to seek out other traders who have set up their own shops when you're looking to purchase new gear for your collection. Now that is freaking sweet. That is awesome. I'm glad they added this into the game. It's 
going to be a whole lot of fun playing Fallout 76. Now, legendary exchange machines. Legendary exchange machines have also been added at train stations around Appalachian. You can use them to turn in your unwanted legendary items into a new currency called legendary scrip. Now, these legendary scripts can be used to buy legendary items from the purveyor, a new legendary vendor who will be arriving in Appalachian on May the 16th. So, prepare for her arrival by exchanging your items for scrip. The higher the star rating for your legendary items, the more scrip you receive from exchange machines. Legendary script cannot be traded and is not shared across characters on your account. So, something to think about right there. Now for camp crafting and workshops. Camp design protections. Camp objects and structures no longer take damage from the players as long as the defending player and their camp defenses are not hostile against it their attackers. Foundations, the requirement that all foundations pieces in a block of foundations needed to be built on the terrain has been removed. Now only the first foundation will need to be built on the terrain and subsequent foundations snap to that original piece will then ignore this rule. Awesome. This change only applies to camps and doesn't affect a workshop's personal terminal. Players can now build a power, a personal terminal in their camps, which can give information about new discoveries and appellation and provide a reminder about visiting some of your daily friends. You can claim a free personal terminal from your humble abode by visiting the Atomic Shop. The personal terminal can be found on the miscellaneous structures tabs in the build menu. Punch bowls can no longer be activated and beverages can no longer be placed within. Death note, who's been spiking the punch? We've had uh, to disable the functionality of punch bowls for the time being, but you can still build and place them in your camp. The white spring camps can no longer be built or placed near the white springs golf club. Death note. We've seen many requests from the Fallout 76 community to remove the ability to build camps near the White Spring Golf Club, and they contend to trivialize enemies in the area. We agree with this feedback and decided to place a no-build zone in this location. Workshop PvP. The following adjustments have been made to the rules of Workshop PvP. Workshop owners must now enter the bounds of the workshop before they are placed in PvP with the contesting players. Workshop tours no longer attack a wanted player unless the player is contesting their own workshop. Players that are not actively contesting an own workshop cannot damage the objects built there. Under design and balance, we have ammo, fueler flame, created via crafting increases from 5 to 20, ammo, chiral cells, created via crafting increases from 15 to 25, fast travel, a 15 second timer will now appear when attempting to fast travel while enemies are nearby, the player will now automatically fast travel to the selected location when the timer expires as long as they are not hit by an enemy during that countdown. Hunting Rifle. Increase the damage bonuses provided by the Prime and 50 caliber receiver mods. These mods now respectively present the highest and second highest damage increases of any Hunting Rifle receiver mods. Plasma Guns. The damage increased by 30%. I think it should be increased by 50%, but you know, pretty cool. Enclave Plasma Guns. Damage increased by 10% to 30%. Death note, these Plasma Gun changes do not apply to the Gatling Plasma. The damage increases is intended to address drawbacks to plasma weapons that split damage evenly between ballistic and energy damage types. The Gatling plasma only deals energy damage and is already one of the highest DPS heavy auto weapons. Under legendary armor effects. Sentinel Cavalier and Assassin Legendary effects now has 75% chance to apply during combat. Also fix the issue that could not cause these legendary effects to double when using certain equipment combinations. Now there's, there's a death note. Prior to this rebalancing and buff fix, combination of these legendary armors could make players effectively invulnerable from damage, particularly in combat with other players. Now for loot. The legendary drop rates for the Gatling Gun and Cryolator have been adjusted to better match all other weapons. Nuka Shine, shovel new wake up location have been added to Nuka Shine. Rad Star now occur a little more frequently than before in the Ash Heap, Cranberry Bog, the Mire, and the Savage Divide. Now there's the Dev Note. We read your feedback that Rad Storms were too rare, especially when it comes to completing Rad Storm based challenges. This will occur a bit more often than they did prior to the change, but they will still be somewhat rare. Additionally, as of patch 8.5, Nuka Zones count towards Rad Storm challenges progress. 
now under quest and events. Bureau of Tourism, this has been promoted to a full main quest. When players are appointed to begin Bureau of Tourism, it will now display a full quest banner on the screen. Dev note for new players exploring the Toxic Valley is an important step in progressing through the game. We wanted to make sure that players have clear pointers to this a level appropriate content. Miscellaneous, it is now possible for high level unruly golfer feral groups to spawn at the wall. White Springs. This should help higher level players more easily complete the kill and really a golfer feral ghouls at White Springs objective. Now for survival beta. Death machines cap losses on death in the survival beta are now based on the current level of the player and will not exceed 50 caps. Scoreboards added a new survival score category that will be used as primary stats for ranking player performances in survival beta worlds. Also, players receive one survival point for every experience for an earn while playing in the survival beta. The total number of survival points you currently have will determine your placement on the scoreboards. Three players with the highest survival scores will be highlighted on the map. On death, your survival score will be reset to zero. When you kill another player, 75% of the survival points they had prior to death will be added to your survival score. For example, if your survival score is 500 and you kill a player whose score is 1000, they will lose all their points and you receive 750 for a new survival score of 1250. Now for bug fixes, arts and graphics. Characters, female dwellers should no longer clip through the vintage linen coat. Bev, did Bev treads? Yeah, no longer appear to jitter when uh, he stops near the entrance of the Nukashine basement. Enemies there she squatch now have a proper animation for crawling and sitting up after his legs have been crumpled. Mirror Lux are no longer missing gore when dismembered. And also, f enemies fix the visual issue that caused Feral Grooves to spawn wearing too many clothing items. Under item Scout Life number 10 it now displays the correct cover art. Also, outfits reworked a Nuka Girl rocket suit model that appears while inspecting the body piece and helmet, power armor, jetpack visual effects no longer persist upon landing after firing a weapon while using a jetpack, power armor, duplicate decals have been removed from the camo power armor paints, weapon, crossbow bolts have been made easier to see, weapons, fix several issues affecting how weapon lights appears to players. Plasma guns projectile visual effects now correctly appear to start from the barrel of the weapon when viewed by another player. Plasma gatling gun and plasma gun projectile visuals has also been restored. And weather rain no longer falls through campground canopies. Now for camp crafting and workshops. Blueprints fix the rare issue that could cause game controls to lock up when attempting to create a blueprint. Also fix the issue that could prevent blueprints with vases on shelves from being placed. Fix multiple issue that could prevent blueprint placement if a blueprint object such as a tent contain another object. The player camp will now correctly be automatically blueprinted if the client crashed while building. A blueprint that, ended, that includes a tent will no longer be placeable if the selected location is invalid. And also fix the issue that prevented blueprints from being placed if the player stored items have breached the maximum object count. Under Camps, improve the way terrain and support objects are detected which allows for more natural object placement. Fix the issue that could result in loss of stored items under specific condition. And players can now correctly activate the build menu by selecting a teammate's camp even if that teammate is far from the area. Fermenter. Items assigned to the fermenter from the stash are now preserved in the player's camp cannot be placed upon joining the world. Also, all items assigned to the fermenter that have conditions now correctly display their condition bars. Under statues, the bottom of the mountain statue no longer disappears when it is placed or while previewing it in the build menu. Under wall decor, implemented by an improvement affecting how objects, wall decor items are attached to walls or other objects and can now be properly placed around hanging chandeliers. And last but not least, wires editing or removing a wire or placing blueprint containing a wire no longer prevent players from continuing to build. Under Challenges, general corrected typos in a number of challenges. Combat, the destroy robots while unarmed challenge now correctly specifies that the player must use gauntlets or material gloves rather than bare fists. 
We also have holiday. All Halloween costumes now correctly count towards Halloween co costume challenges progress. Hunter hunted. Correctly weekly and daily hunter hunted challenges to specific to specify that the player must win rather than complete Hunter Hunter. Also, the Silver Shroud costume option in Weekly Hunter Hunter Challenges no longer displays description text for the Manta Man costume. And last but not least, correct it, the win Hunter Hunter while wearing a Mr. Fuzzy mask weekly challenge to state the mask instead of hat. Under Weekly, fix the issue that we're sometimes picking flowers, killing huge creatures, and killing Mothman as part of a weekly challenge would not count as expected. Also, corrected a weekly challenge timer that would have outlasted the inevitable heat death on our universe. The Flatwood Monster once again correctly counts as an alien for the take pictures of cryptids weekly challenges under enemies. Exploited exploit, excuse me, address an exploit that could allow players to leave the game playable area near Sugar Grove, and also address an exploit that could allow a vertebrae to be formed for XP. General. Death Claws, Mirror Looks, Mirror Looks, Variants, and Rat Scorpions are no longer considered animals. Death Note, these creatures were incorrectly added to the animals category and they now belong to other creature categories like insects and reptiles. This change should prevent inconsistencies and double dipping that occur when the perk effect that targets certain types and creatures. Imposter Sea Squat, if an Imposter Sea Squat is visible when it is killed, its corpse will no longer become visible. Legendary robots now consistently detonate 10 seconds after being destroyed rather than exploding immediately. Hell yeah. Scorch Beast Queen can no longer be turned into an Ash Pow or a Goo Pow. This should help limit in cases where players were not able to loot the Queen's corpse in certain situations. Now under items. Exploit. Address an exploit that can allow players to gain benefits of a item without consuming it. Fixed issue that could uh, allow players to skip reload animation for certain weapons. Four explosive shotguns. Fix the issue causing shotguns with the explosive legendary effect to deal double damage rather than intended 20%. Under Gatling guns, Gatling guns that have the sight ring mod now fires more accurately down the sights. Gatling laser. Fix the issue that caused the Gatling laser to fire only fire one round when reloading the fire button after reloading a fusion core. Grognak Axe can now correctly be repaired beyond 100% condition using a weapon artisan perk. Legendary items, all legendary effects rather than just the first, are now correctly listed in notification that appears when receiving a legendary item. Also, legendary stars are now correctly displayed in the item's name on the inspect and modify screen as well as in the notification that appears when receiving a legendary item. Now, Lever Action Rifle. The wooden in layer Inlay lever action rifle paint can now be correctly applied to the soul survival and will remain applied between play sessions. Loot fix the issue that could prevent players from receiving a legendary item after killing a legendary creature or busy servers. Minigun crafting a chrome minigun paint now correctly consumes the required materials. Mod fix the issue that prevented the electrified mod from dealing its bonus damage to the Seep Squatch. Nuka Code Pieces. Remove the second item preview that appeared upon picking up a Nuka Code. Paper Bags. Fix the issue that could occur when dropping items on the ground inside Vault 76. Power Armor. The Targeting HUD Helmet Mod Detected Life Effect is no longer applied to nearby players. Power Armor. Bone Raider Excavation Pay can no longer be applied to the left arm piece of the X01 Power Armor. Power Armor Fusion Cores no longer continue to drain while the player is dead. Pro Snap Deluxe. Using a photo mode pose or an emote while the Pro Snap Deluxe is equipped no longer results in sudden teleportation. Also, mods are no longer removed from the player's Pro Snap Deluxe if they have not yet completed the bucket list quest. And last but not least, Old target data no longer persists on the screen when attempting to take a photo of something new. And Stealth Boy 3 can now correctly be used from the Pit Boy inventory. Under Performance and Stability, Loading address an issue that could cause players to encounter an infinite loading screen when fast traveling to the top of the world, address the issue that could cause the client to crash while in the white screen bunker, and fix the issue to and fix the crash that sometimes occurred while loading new area. Under perks, adrenaline, fix the issue that could cause weapons to update incorrectly in the pit boy. Also, animal friends, diff claw, mega sloth, mirror and scorpion beach can no longer be pacified by the animal friend. 
Speaking of animal friend, mutant hams can now be pacified by animal friend. Clash Freak now correctly suppress, suppresses the grounded mutation negative effects. Marathoner updated the description text to indicate that Marathoner has no effect while wearing power armor. Strange in numbers now behaves more consistently when players and their mutated teammates are far away from each other. Weight reduction perks. Item weight displays now refresh correctly when equipping and unequipping weight perks like Pack Rack. Wasteland Whisper. Graham can no longer be pacified by a Wasteland Whisper. Also, Mega Shot, Mega Sloths, Snarly Gathers, and Wendigos can no longer be pacified by a Wastelander Whisper. Merilux and Merilux Hunter can now be pacified by Wasteland Whisper. Now for quests and events. AWOL Armaments. Now reward 350 experience when completing successfully. Back on the back, still hard, no longer sometimes stops moving after combat. Back on the back now has a random chance to start instead of starting automatically when players enter Morgantown. Census Violence now award 350 experience points when completing successfully. Cold Case fix the issue that could prevent the player from crafting the kid secure IDs despite having the required material. Daily Quest no longer displays their fanfares after logging out and back in. Encrypted fix the issue that could sometimes cause the imposter squeeze seep squash to sometimes stop attacking. I had a little you know little blur right there. <laughs> Free range fix the issue that could cause the uh, Barama names to display play show text under certain circumstances. Free range address the issue that could cause Barama spawn by free range to remain in the world even if no no players engage with the event. Grafting day adjusts the grafting day event area to prevent starting and exiting the event at the same time. Heart of the Enemy fixed the issue that prevented players from repeating the Heart of the Enemy daily quest. Cranberry Bog now offers the repeatable versions of the quest every other day. Also, Heart of the Enemy quest markers that point players to quest locations inside Vault Tech University now correctly leads them to the best door to get to the objective. Hollow Tapes correctly several issues with the Hollow Tape subtitles that did not completely match the audio during Unsolved Quest into the fire. No longer did sometimes displays a miscellaneous quest instead of a full quest. Key to the past, fix the issue that could prevent the objective from appearing in the quest tracker if the player disconnect from the world after finding Rosalind's note. Load bearing, players who are still inside the mine when the escape timer expires will now be correctly killed when the mine collapses. Miscellaneous the kill a Wendigo while wearing a clown costume objective no longer reappears on login after it has been completed. Tracking terror. Fix an issue that could cause a son of Fluffy to spawn as a legendary. Unsolved death and taxidermy. Clue items are now collectively marked as quest items in the player's inventory. Unsolved death and taxidermy. Fix an issue that could cause an invoice to duplicate. And death and taxidermy fix an issue that could cause some quest items to disappear from the player's inventory after cleaning the quest and logging out. Unsolved pic picnic panic increased the font size of married diaries page so that is easier to read and wasted on Nukashan fix the issue that could prevent the wasted on Nukashan quest from appearing in the quest tracker. Under sound, power armor, Nuka Shine power armor, landing sound effects no longer apply to power armor that does not have a Nuka Shine paint. Under survival, addictions are no longer cured by death. Kims, the detect life effect applied by Barry Mentis not only apply to players who consume them. Food, canned, meat stewed, awarded by the Feed the People quest can no longer spoil. Mutations, the Impha mutation now interacts correctly with both the Strange in Numbers and Clash Freak perks. Now under user interface buttons, the change profile button on Xbox One has been changed to X to avoid conflicts with other button assignments. Camp. The cap price displayed when attempting to move camp. Location now matches the actual cost. Combat directly hit indicators now correctly appear when hit while in several menus, including the map, vats, workbenches, and camp workshop menus. Combat directional hit indicator once again appear when hit by plasma weapon fired by another player. Controls opening the pit boy immediately after exiting the loading screen are switching between first and third person's view, no longer causes the game controls to become unresponsive. New screen fix the issue that could allow the new screen to appear while performing a streaming install of Fallout 76. Notification radio station discover messages no longer always appear all at once after logging in. Photo mode equipping binocular no longer causes photo mode poses, names, and descriptions to become mixed up. Pit Boy explosive shotgun damage displayed in the Pit Boy now matches the weapon's actual damage in the Pit Boy's 
component view all components are now shown in the list not just components that are in the player's inventory this should allow for easier tracking of hard to find crafting ingredients under player icons pick multiple issues that could cause player icons to reset to the default icon quest markers now correctly appear on the map in the compass and above paper bags when items are dropped on death in the survival mode beta shop fix the issue that prevented limited time offers from refreshing correctly in the atomic shop without a client restart shop preview images of the red rocket door now correctly includes the door metal sliding walls tutorials the pro snap deluxe tutorial from Karmazoon now appear correctly when the player looks through the viewfinder vendors now readily trade and armor mod plans that were previously randomized including brotherhood of steel combat armor mods and deep pocketed mods vendor none plans and recipes once again correctly sort to the top of vendor inventory list vendor items in the vendor inventories can once again be inspected and last but not least workbenches pressing the repair kit button immediately after entering an inspecting menu no longer places the player in a workbench menu showing atomic shop items so there you have it pretty freaking long I don't know 25 minutes but hey I got all of the update there we have the patch highlights we have the new pioneer scouts we have the new backpacks the new vending machines and a new quest legendary camps and workshop changes yeah great update great update so that's pretty much going in it for this video for all of those that still stuck around obviously you didn't want to read it all <laughs> that's cool I'm glad you are here uh, once again, as always, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe. And for everybody that want to support the channel, you can do so by smashing that thumbs up button and leaving a comment down below. Once again, truly do appreciate you being here and spending the time with me on this channel and this community. And as always, I will be seeing y'all in the next one.